Hello everyone, I'm bringing you the Mannequin of the Month for August 2023 today and before we get into the main part of the video and talk about the mannequin here and what's on the mannequin I just wanted to mention a couple of things at the start of the video. The first is there won't be another video uploaded midweek this week. It'll be next weekend or possibly the Monday just because the schedule, the filming schedule has been a little bit uh, sort of put out of, out of balance by real life goings on, which happens sometimes. So just to let you know, I will be putting a post on the community tab as well, just to let everyone know. But I was hoping to catch a few viewers at the start of this video to mention that too directly. And the other thing I wanted to mention is this does not quite conform to the option that was available on Patreon. So my apologies to the Patreon uh, subscribers who voted on this. In actual fact, this is a, a, le a lieutenant uh, in the Royal Naval Volunteer Reserve. In my head, I had convinced myself that this jacket, which has been in storage for a while, had pay branch, a pay branch distinction, which would be a white band between the two uh, bars of gold lace on the cuff here, and it doesn't. So it's just a general service Royal Navy uniform. It doesn't have the specific branch uh, insignia there. The colour between the bands would be used to distinguish different branches uh, in particular uh, parts of the Royal Navy, the particular branches which were not really seamen branches, they were specialists. So you had the pay branch, you'd have the medical branch, the dental branch, you had the engineers, electrical engineers, so you'd have different colours between the bands of gold lace there to distinguish this. I thought this jacket had those for the pay branch and having white and it doesn't as you can see. Nevertheless, I can talk about a lot of the details I wanted to talk about without this being a pay branch uniform. So this will still allow me to cover the topic quite well, which is, is great. So what we have on the uniform here is a second war era Royal Navy uniform to a lieutenant in the Royal Naval Volunteer Reserve. And before I get into the details of what shows its volunteer reserve, we'll talk about some of the other details. We'll start at the top and uh, move our way down. Basically, at the top here, we have the standard peak cap of an officer in the Royal Navy, as you can see there. We have, uh, obviously, a, a patent leather peak there, patent leather chin strap with two cloth cover buttons. You'll see those as we move this round. And this, of course, has a blue cloth top to it, which is quite soft, as you can see there. And this could also be fitted with a white cover. And during the war, that was largely restricted to the Mediterranean and the tropics, and obviously in home waters, the blue top was used throughout the, throughout the year. Prior to the war, um, you'd have a change between winter and summer, depending on uh, whether you'd have the blue or the white top. And that was obviously something to, that was cut down on during the war, to as a, basically as an economy measure in terms of providing kit to the sailors and indeed for officers as well. The cap badge, you can see here, is stitched to a mohair band, which runs around the, the band of the cap there. And this is an economy version of the cap badge as well. And we've talked in previous videos about the various economy measures in the uniform, which were introduced, particularly for the army. We're looking at battle dress, how the battle dress design was simplified and basically uh, was uh, redesigned for austerity to re reduce the amount of materials used, bringing in vegetable ivory and so forth to replace brass buttons and things like this. And the Royal Navy had great economies in its uniform as well, both for ratings and officers. There were a lot of economy measures introduced during the course of the war. And the cap badge here is one of those. It is pressed metal. So rather than being made of bullion wire embroidery, this is pressed metal on a felt backing. It does achieve pretty much the same look. And this design was introduced in 1941, so relatively early in the war, economy measures coming in and it would be quite common to see later in the war uh, this design of cap badge in use. And as I say, this is supposed to represent a lieutenant in the Royal Navy Volunteer Reserve in 1944, purely because the jacket dates from 1944. You can see underneath the jacket we have a white shirt and black wool tie here. This is a collar, uh, detachable collar shirt, so the collar is separate to the shirt and obviously attached with studs, very typical of the time. And the jacket itself, as you can see here, is the classic naval uniform jacket, still worn today basically as the Navy's dress uniform. You have, as you can see, eight buttons down the front here. It's double-breasted, very smart uniform, I have to say. I think the Royal Navy uniform of this period in particular, because of the material it's made from, is particularly smart. But you have the single breast pocket here, as you can see, and you have two hip pockets here, which are flapless hip pockets. You can see there, they are functional. And this is quite a functional garment. For the time, it's referred to as number five undress uniform. 
and it's the basic working uniform. Now, there were other elements to this. You'd see other clothing brought in for foul weather use and so forth, particularly on small ships. You see quite a variety of different uh, elements of non-uniform clothing in use as well in foul weather situations. But this is the basic working uniform of officers in the Royal Navy during the war. You would, of course, have number 5A and number 5B for use as well by uh, as a working uniform more generally and also by air crew in the case of number 5B and that's something we'll talk about in a future video. I, I think this may inspire a video later in the month talking about number 5A uniform as well which is basically a battle dress uniform. The Navy didn't refer to it as battle dress but it's styled after battle dress. But this is, as I say, the basic working uniform is this which is now the dress uniform which shows you how things change over time. And this is not made of barathea as modern uniforms of this cut are for dress use, this is made of uh, doe skin, which is very similar to mole skin. It's a very hard wearing uh, wool cloth, uh, which actually sheds dirt and so forth very easily. You can brush this and it comes up very, very, it comes up very well, sheds dirt quite easily from that point of view. It's a very hard wearing uniform. This particular uniform itself has an interesting economy feature again introduced in 1941, which is the fact that it only has half lace on the cuff. So you have the outer lace here showing the rank. Normally the lace would pass all the way around the back of the cuff, but that's not the case in this instance. It stops at each seam back and front, as you can see there, to reduce the amount of gold lace that's used. This is distinctive to the Royal Navy Volunteer Reserve, this particular pattern of lace. There were three different patterns of lace used during the war by different uh, reserve and the regular forces of the Royal Navy. The regular forces, of course, used the standard straight lace with a round curl. You then have the Royal Navy Volunteer Reserve which used this style, slightly thinner lace, a waved pattern and a square curl. And then you have the Royal Navy Reserve, was made up of reservists who'd left the, the pucker service, who used an interlaced uh, crisscross pattern of lace and then a, an interesting sort of star-shaped curl because of that crisscross pattern of the thin lace. So you have these different lace patterns. And I say this is Royal Navy Volunteer Reserve which would basically be the, the standard lace you'd see for all sort of hostilities only officers in the Royal Navy. You'd have Royal Navy Volunteer Reserve lace because you aren't joining the regular service. You're, drawing, you're joining the Volunteer Reserve basically for war service. So war, war service officers would, generally speaking, have this lace unless they joined up with the Royal Navy proper. So that's the basic uniform there. Uh, one final thing to mention is with the buttons here, these are gilt buttons with a crown over a fouled anchor, a rope rim, basically standard Royal Navy officers' buttons. Prior to the war, these would have had RNV on them, so actually letters uh, across the button, and this would reappear post-war. During the war, that was dispensed with, again, as an economy measure. You didn't want to be making too many different patterns of buttons. So much as it's still a very nice uniform, it's still very smart and so forth, you can see these various economy features we're talking about here. There's not a huge amount more to talk about with this really because it is just the uniform on the mannequin. We don't have any other equipment and so forth. But nevertheless, we'll start moving this around now and have a look at some of the other details. Looking at the right hand side here, you can see some details of the construction. You do have slightly padded shoulders, which is interesting with this. You can see the cloth covered button on the side of the cap there, which attaches the chin strap at the front there. And you can see the construction of the cap there as well, the welt round there, and just some other details of the uniform here, details of the construction and so forth there. You can see the the dart running down here to pull that in around the waist and so forth and obviously details of the pocket there as well. Looking at the back of this you can see we have a central seam running down here and then you have seams running down each side which end in vents here as you can see there and you can see the lining material there. This is tailor made and these were manufactured by tailors during the war of course they were made to measure but they are made to those wartime specifications for example in having the removal of the lace from the back of the cuff there to cut down on the lace which was used. Finally, moving on to look at the left-hand side of the mannequin here, there isn't a huge amount more to see on the mannequin, but I will talk a little bit more about the branch distinctions that the Royal Navy used for officers, which involved having a coloured strip of wool cloth between the rank lace on the cuff. So if you had more uh, gold rank lace down here, you'd have a coloured strip between each. And these colour strips denoted specialist branches within the Royal Navy other than the seaman branch. So you're not involved in necessarily fighting the ship and operating the ship. You're involved in engineering, medical, uh, providing medical facilities. The pay branch was another example of that, which is where the option on Patreon initially came from. If this were pay branch, it would have had a white band between the gold 
uh, cuff lace there. And obviously with this being a half, uh, half lace uh, jacket, it would have stopped here. If it had gold lace all the way around the back, the color would have followed all the way around as well. And if this were a commander, you'd have another gold bar and you'd have another white band in between the, the gold lace. This system, uh, I'm not going to go into all the colours here, but this system was used for a while. It's almost defunct now. There are two branches which still use this as far as I'm aware, and that's the medical branch, which used red and did use red at the time, and the dental branch, which uses a sort of salmon pink, a very pale orangey colour, and that I believe is still in use as well. I'm happy to be corrected on that. It may have changed very recently, but according to my understanding, those two colours are still in use from this older system. Uh, and during the war, you had different colours for various other branches as well. And as I say, it's very easy to look those up online. I'm not going to go through them here verbatim, but if you're interested in finding out about the different branch colours which were used, that uh, information is readily available online. So I do hope you found it interesting looking at this. It's very nice to get this out of storage and have it on the mannequin. It'll be staying here for a little while now. It's quite a smart uniform to have on display. And obviously, Royal Navy was my first interest and it's always nice to be able to talk about it. So I'm glad this option topped the poll, even if it's slightly different than what was initially sort of offered. So my apologies again for that. I hope it's nevertheless been interesting looking at this. If you have found this interesting and you'd like to see more of this sort of thing, please do consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. And whether you're newly subscribing or you've previously subscribed, please do make sure you hit the little bell, the notification button down below. That will of course alert you when I upload future videos. If you really like my uploads and you'd like the chance to vote on what's going to be covered in Mannequin for the Month each month, Patreon is linked down below and it's the corporal tier down there that gives you the option to vote on this. And also PayPal is linked as well and a huge thanks to everybody who supports the channel using those two methods. It really is greatly appreciated as I always say. Thank you all very much indeed. If you'd like to follow the channel on social media, you can. Facebook, Instagram and Twitter are all linked down below and there will of course be photographs of this posted up over there as well. And if you'd like to get in touch but you don't really use social media, there is of course an email address in the description as well. That's everything for this video, so until next time, bye for now.